a young musician wakes up one morning with a melody stuck in his head, a melody that he just can't shake off, and that feels like it's been with him forever. He starts playing it on the piano, trying to put words to it, and about a year and a half later, he's written one of the most iconic and enduring songs of all time. The musician was Paul McCartney, and the song was Yesterday. McCartney's creative authenticity shines through every aspect of the song, from the way that he crafted the melody to the way he expressed the emotions of longing and regret through the lyrics. It's a song that's both timeless and personal, exemplifying the qualities of true creative authenticity. But how does one develop their own creative authenticity in their field? How does one find their own unique voice and create something that resonates with people on such a deep level? Join me in this video as I uncover the secrets to becoming a true original and leaving your mark on your field. Anyone can do it. it just takes three steps. Here are the three steps to cultivating your own creative authenticity. Step number one imitation and absorption. The first key to developing your own creative voice in a field is to study, master, and imitate the work of those who've come before you. This means immersing yourself in the work of other professionals in your field and taking the time to study and learn as much as you can about their approaches and their techniques. Author Austin Kleon writes in his book, Steal Like an Artist. What a good artist understands is that nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before. Nothing is completely original. He writes further, chew on one thinker, writer, artist, activist, role model, someone you really love. Study everything there is to know about that thinker. Then find three people that that thinker loved and find out everything about them. Repeat this as many times as you can. Climb up the tree as far as you can go. Once you build your tree, it's time to start your own branch. Let's return to the story of how the Beatles song Yesterday was born. The basic melody of the song came to Paul McCartney in a dream, something that many people have equated to a creative miracle. But what many people perceive as this mystical moment of inspiration was likely the result of Paul's years of musical experience and immersion in the work of the great musical masters who came before him. In fact, some experts believe that Yesterday is a direct direct evolution of the melody from the Ray Charles version of Georgia On My Mind because it shares a chord progression and mirrors the bass lines of the song. Paul was a big admirer of Ray Charles. In fact, he and his Beatles bandmates started off their music career by playing his covers in bars and clubs. Ultimately, the creation of Yesterday was likely the result of subconscious processing of the music Paul McCartney loved, studied, and mastered. Even Paul himself stated in an interview, if you're very spiritual, then God sent me a melody. I'm a mere vehicle. If you want to be a bit more cynical, then I was loading my computer for millions of years, listening to all the stuff I listened to through my dad and through my musical tastes, including people like Fred Astaire, Gershwin, and finally my computer printed out one morning what I thought was a good tune. This story illustrates how McCartney's creative authenticity was shaped by his extensive study and mastery of the works of the musical legends that came before him. Step number two, exposure. In order for you to develop your own creative voice, you need to expose yourself to as many things as possible and not just in the narrow area in which you're trying to be creative. You have to expose yourself to as many things as you possibly can to build up memories and experiences that you can use to inspire your creative ideas. Think of your brain as an empty bowl. You need to add as many ingredients and mix them all up in order to create a delicious cake. You can't create something tasty without adding the ingredients. The same applies to creativity. You can't create something unless you have many experiences that your brain can pull from to create. You can create new experiences by traveling, socializing, and reading as much as you possibly can about any and all topics. Author Austin Kleon writes, you have to be curious about the world in which you live. Look things up, chase down every reference, go deeper than anyone else, and that's how you'll get ahead. By exposing yourself to a wide variety of experiences and ideas, this will increase your chance of bringing together seemingly unrelated concepts and ideas, which will help you develop your own creative footprint. A great example of this is Dr. Will Flannery, a medical comedian who has a YouTube channel named Dr. Glockham Flecken. He uses his medical knowledge to create comedy skits that are both entertaining and informative. Knock, knock. Hi, I'm the new med student. Hi, it's my first day. And then an incision was made. And the section was performed. And then the after the incision, I'll put the parent in the game. And I'll look 
She was taken to recovery in stable condition. End of dictation. This is your first surgical rotation? Uh, yeah. Well, to start, your responsibilities will be things that could easily be done by a machine or some other inanimate object. Okay. Holding things. Telling me numbers I could easily find myself. Opening doors. Opening doors? Yes, it's important my progress not be impeded. If I have to open doors myself, people die. Okay, I can do that. If you master these duties, you'll be given tasks that a small child could perform, and then we'll progress from there. Okay. Now our next case is about to start. It's a long one, so I'll be entertaining myself by asking you questions there's no way you'll know the answer to. Are you ready? Yeah. By gaining exposure and experience in two diverse fields, comedy and medicine, Dr. Glockham Flecken was able to bring together his knowledge of medicine with his comedic talents to create something truly authentic and unique. His unique approach has helped him stand out among other comedians and medical professionals on YouTube, which has allowed him to build a very dedicated following. The last step to developing your creative footprint is to allow for an incubation period. Let's return to the cake baking analogy. Let's say you have all of these ingredients, you've mixed them up in a bowl, and it takes one extra step to create the cake, and that is putting it in the oven and letting it bake until it's just right. In order for your brain to create, it needs time to process what it's been exposed to. This is called the incubation period. Incubation involves taking a break from actively thinking about a concept and allowing the mind to subconsciously process it. This can lead to the generation of new ideas. Taking a break from your purposeful creative endeavors to sleep, do something active, watch a movie, or spend time with family and friends is a great way to allow for incubation. There is a neat trick that you can use to speed up the incubation period, and that is through daily writing. One method that can be helpful is the concept of morning pages, introduced by author Julia Cameron in her book, The Artist's Way. The idea is to write three pages every morning about anything that comes to mind. This daily writing practice allows your brain to process and organize recently learned or experienced concepts, which can help speed up the incubation period and bring new ideas to the surface. I hope you enjoyed this video and found these three steps useful. Remember, these concepts apply to every field where creativity is involved, not just the arts. Whether you're writing, making music, making videos, performing research, or solving math problems, there's always opportunity for creative thinking. With these steps in mind, you'll be well on your way to developing your own unique and authentic creative voice. This is NeuroGalMD. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. Bye.